we're going to have instead a uniform rigid rod. Again, uniform means it has a constant density. In this particular case, it's going to have a constant linear mass density. So we have our uniform rigid rod, which looks like this. And we are going to spin that uniform rigid rod about the center of mass of it, which is going to be right in the middle. So this is going to be our axis of rotation. This rod is going to have a length L. We are again going to split it into an infinitely large number of infinitesimally small pieces, dm, which are all going to be located at a distance x from the axis of rotation. And the thickness of each one of these, or the width, excuse me, of each one of these is going to be dx. So you can see there's a lot of redundancy here. This is very similar to what we did before. We're figuring out the moment of inertia about this axis here, which I'm going to call the y-axis. So we're figuring out the moment of inertia about the y-axis. Again, this is going to be the integral of r squared dm. So here we do have the issue where we need to figure out r as a, um, we need to relate r squared and dm here. So we're going to adjust dm to make it so that it is a function of r. Now, we're going to come back to the linear mass density, which is equal to mass per unit length. Well, it's equal to then dm divided by dx. We've done this before. dm then is equal to lambda times dx. We can substitute in for um, the lambda because the lambda, well, let's do it this. Yeah, we'll do it in two steps. So the lambda is mass over length. So mass over length times dx dm equals mass over length times dx. So we can now substitute into this equation. We get the integral of r squared times mass over length with respect to x. What are constants in underneath the integral that we can take out? Sarah Jane. Uh, the mass and the length. Mass and length. So we have mass per unit length integral of r squared. Uh, and actually, we can change from r to x because the, the position we're talking about here is in the x direction rather than just a generic r. So this is the same thing as x squared. Uh, and that is times dx, or with respect to x, excuse me. What are the limits? Yes, but I don't understand where r is. R is, just, r is just a general statement for position, or the distance from the, x, from the axis of rotation. So in this particular case, it's in the x direction, so that's why I can replace it with an x. This but it's rotated all the length. Right, so I'm taking this object and I'm basically spinning it this way. Okay. So, now, what are the limits on this integral? Then? We go from one half of the length on the negative side to one half of the length on the positive side. So the limits are from negative L over 2 to L over 2. We take the integral, we get mass over length. Uh, it's going to be the integral x cubed over 3 from uh, negative L over 2 to L over 2. We need to plug in all of the stuff here. We have the moment of inertia about the y-axis is equal to m over l times uh, l over 2 cubed over 3 minus negative l over 2 cubed over 3. Mass per unit length. This is l cubed over 8 times 3. Am I correct? That's 24. Yes. All right, a negative uh, times a negative times a negative times a negative makes a positive, so positive L cubed over 24 again. We have one of our L's is gonna cancel out, we'll get L squared, so M times L squared over 24 plus L squared over 24, and so this is equal to 1 12 ML squared. 
the moment of inertia about the y-axis. Notice, this was just picking an axis of rotation that's about the middle of the rock. We could also in the, take and figure out the moment of inertia about the end of the rod instead. What does that change about the problem we're doing here? Tim? All it changes is the limits. So I come back to where we added the limits, which was, let's go right here. We have the moment of inertia about the end then is going to be equal to m over l times the integral from 0 to L of x squared dx. So it's equal to m over L times x cubed over 3 from 0 to L. Or m times L cubed over 3L, or 1 third m L squared. So notice where you choose to rotate the object affects the moment of inertia. 